Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to PwC Herald Talks, the, the business series aimed at giving you some strategies and insights as we examine local and, and, and overseas trends and topics, upcoming trends and topics in the world of business to help give you some strategies and insights into how you can grow and diversify your businesses in the ever-changing New Zealand landscape. When I was uh, about 18 years old, uh, my brother decided he was going to um, set up a little factory in New Zealand to make these kit sets and sort of commercialize it further so we can sell the stores. So you've got to be hungry and you've got to be passionate about what you do. If you're not passionate about what you do, you won't be any good at it because it's hard. You have to be relentless for a long time. I think it's the most powerful word in business, the word simple. It's a great book, Think Simple. And it's how you can really simplify your business and streamline it and never ever make it complicated. Simplicity is the key to building a powerful business. Every single concept that I find that works has almost that formula. So it's 80% familiar and it has that little twist, that little bit of um, innovation or that little bit of a competitive advantage that means that you can win. Things can go so viral so quickly now um, and you can reach a global market so easily. If you look at companies like Warby Parker, Harry's, Dollar Shave, Allbirds, which is a great New Zealand story, um, MVMT watches. These businesses are building their whole business on the back of just social and digital marketing. It's so cheap, so targeted, and you can get to an audience so quickly now that you can build a great business. Clients nowadays are wanting the best that they can get, and that's unfortunately not necessarily in New Zealand. But if we want to build a global, a global brand and bring on the best people to work for us, we've actually got to create a business model where people want to come and, come and work for us. So they want to come, they want to be able to live in Invercargill, or live in Nelson, or live in Fongery, and not necessarily work on projects in those local areas. We saw that um, there was a need in the market for the type of design that we uh, were doing, and um, the, the step, um, I'm a, an opportunist, so you take the opportunities. Um, you, uh, you have to be sort of risk adverse, but um, take low risks um, or, or high risk, depending on where you are. But um, I, I think the, the steps um, for us was, uh, was quite um, it was quite sort of straightforward as such because we had a good setup um, in New Zealand. We had a good model that can actually be replicated into different regions. So now we have um, you know, the design but also project management and construction components that under a different company, which we won't talk about just now, but um, so that can actually then be picked up and then dropped into any other region around the world. So, I And there are four things they tell us about doing business with New Zealanders. And they say, first of all, uh, turn up on time. Really get to know your market and understand how complex this is. You're in the big world now, so turn up on time. The second thing is be prepared. And so they're often uh, bemused by how unprepared we are when we turn up overseas. We think what will work in one country will work in another, and we need to do a lot more preparation and work there. The third thing, and that's really the most important, is they say, what are you trying to sell me? What's your value proposition? What's your pitch? Um, and, you know, Kiwis are well renowned for, for solving problems, so we often walk in and go, well, what would you like? We can do that. We can do anything. Versus, here's what I've got to offer. So they're looking for a really clear pitch. And then the fourth thing, which I think is pretty familiar for the rest of the audience, is close the deal. Why can't kids be learning how to code early? Why can't they be learning how to make apps? Why can't they be learning about automation, how it's going to change the world, robotics? Like, all of these subjects as well, um, from a really early age, if we're teaching kids this really early, this is where we're going to get our value add going into the future. I mean, we can always rely on agriculture, tourism, and selling education, but you know, we can be so much more. We can create true global companies, but we've got to start at the grassroots.